I see from your website you use the term intentional inventions. What's your approach in designing a new product for retail? Intentional invention. For us, invention is a key part of the design process. You know, I think a lot of companies and even a lot of designers regard invention as something that might happen or is accidental part of the design process for us. Or it only relates to gadgets. Right. <laughs> you know, it's it's like, you know, you have this crazy guy inventing in a garage or something. That's not what we're talking about here. What we right. we're talking about invention as being what's novel, what's innovative and new about what we're designing. So it, it, it could be something small. It could be a feature that's invented. It could be something big. It could be a whole product that is disruptive that you've never thought of before. But the point of what we do is that it is absolutely strategic and intentional right. with not every product we design, but the majority of them. We specifically look at the competitive landscape, the market of other products that are out there, okay. and how are we, for ourselves, for our clients, going to set this product apart, make it better, more desirable, and in some ways more protectable from foreign competition, factory direct competition, things like this. There's, you know, you, the dynamic is so difficult in, in the market today. So you have suppliers who are competing against you and going factory direct. You have customers who are, you know, you're selling to these retailers and yet they're also sourcing direct. So everybody is competing for everything. So in order for you to stay um, competitive and to keep your position in the marketplace, you have to have products that are highly differentiated, very special, and that special can come from design, it can come from a, and engineering. Some engineering, it can come from a patented feature, it can come from something invention, invented. And that's what we look at is we look at the whole thing and we call it intentional invention because that's what we're intentionally doing is we are intentionally creating a product that is I must have mm -hmm. and I must have it only from you rather than a commodity. And this works for different kinds of companies. It works for the market leader who is, yes, has the dominant amount of market share, but wants to maintain that or needs to maintain that against, you know, upcoming competition. And price pressure. Price pressure, that's right. It also is critical for the up-and-comer who's trying to get their foot in the door into this market and try to establish themselves. Yeah, and, and that up-and-comer doesn't have to be just a new startup. We've seen it where a large company, you know, one of our clients actually, wanted to start a new division and he couldn't even get himself in the door because... They didn't want to. They didn't want to let them have that much business throughout their throughout the retail store. So you know, in order for you to create and break into a new category of products or a you know new retailer altogether, sometimes you have to take it so much farther than the next guy. We apply an intentional invention in the majority of the work that we do. We've done it throughout our career that way. I mean, we use intentional invention as a strategic advantage for both us and our clients. We, we do it because they need to be differentiated and they need to create a uh, significant market advantage for their, for their particular and sometimes uh, for their particular look or design or feature or whatever that it is that is inventive about it. But they also need to make sure that they can't get easily knocked off. They can't get easily replaced by um, factor direct. And we've been doing this for throughout our careers and that's why we have over 32 issued or pending patents. And we have 95% of the patents that we've applied for have been granted. Right. We, um, we also have, you know, at this stage, we have 81% uh, commercialization rate, meaning 81% of, of those 32 patents have been uh, commercialized, turned into product. And the, it's actually kind of low for us because that it's mm. not realistic because uh, six of them we just invented. So we haven't had a chance to like well, we commercialize just, them yet. We <laughs> so just filed them. We right, just filed right. them. So they'll be commercialized. If we don't commercialize them in a year, I'd be surprised. You know, it, it's been really a, a very strategic part of the services that we offer our clients or the products that we pursue on our own. And not only have we commercialized them, um, some we've licensed, some we've sold and some we've licensed and sold multiple times, in right. fact. Um, so it, it is a key, critical part of business. 
Right. I mean, and it, and part of it is is something that you had said earlier, and that is that there are you know three types of people who can take advantage mm -hmm. of it. So you can have the corporation who is looking to create a corporate asset level. So in other words, this just happened to us recently. Right. We had a client, and we we gave them almost almost a dozen patents, mm -hmm. and then they got acquired. So those ca those assets of those patents became a significant part of their acquisition value. Right and a part that, that the company bought to exploit in the marketplace. And so, you know, that's that's one way to look at it. So it helps prep you for you may, your exit entry, exit, exit strategy, strategy, you know. But it also, for a market leader and who needs to sort of strengthen their, their foothold on a market or further try to be the dominant player and corner of that market, uh, it gives them a better defensive position to do that. Yeah, we just did that last year, and it was a really good example of it. Is that you know, there was all this litigation going on around um, around a specific uh, feature, and um, and what we did was we developed three other patentable features that were ways around that. So it strengthened a patent. That's a really important key point about strategy. I mean, if we were working for that market leader we would be coming up with those alternate ways to get around the patent for them to use to further strengthen their position. But right. if you're an up and comer or one of the competitors who they may have sued for patent infringement to try to kick them out of the market, you know, companies have to make a decision. Are they going to spend millions of dollars defending that patent, hoping that they'll win the lawsuit? And that's a risky proposition. Or what we would recommend is to invent and design around that existing patent so that they can compete unencumbered right. by the the big player uh, who has right it's a whole patent. lot easier to say i give and i'll try and, I, and do it a totally alternate method that then you can patent so um you know and, and i think some of those three that we designed are actually lower costs so in the end they were right. actually beneficial so they're you know it's not just a, a defensive strategy and, you know, a lot of companies think that invention is something that is accidental or if they end up developing a product that's patentable, that, that they were lucky. Right. Uh, that it's not something you can actually set out a goal to develop a product that is um, not only patentable but has a meaningful patent to protect it. And, and that's really just not true. You absolutely can make that a goal set it out and go and do it yeah and i mean we set out that yeah we times. set out that we we plan to do 10 inventions this year and we filed six we now? filed six so far so, so we're, we're halfway through the yeah, year yeah we're in perfect timing to do it maybe we'll take christmas off <laughs> <laughs> so anyway but it's just one of those things where you where when you intend to do this at, and you have a market purpose for it you also make it more commercial commercial applicable and so that's the thing is, is that we don't recommend that you go out there and just file patents to file patents in fact mm -hmm. we discourage that because it's costly it's time consuming mm -hmm. and it's not worth it but if you are going to market it, this product and if you're going to uh, commercialize it then this can be a competitive advantage for you